Before we get started, I uh, want to go over a few particulars here uh, after we have some remarks. From the stage here for Mr. Johnson and Aaron, uh, we'll open up the Q&A. What we do ask is, uh, raise your hand, we'll call on you and you get the mic, please. Introduce yourself and your affiliation. Um, after the Q&A, we'll do a photo op here on top of the stage and then we will break down for one-on-ones. Um, so let's get home. Uh, pleasure to bring the stage, the chairman of the New York Jets, Mr. Woody Johnson. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you all doing? Really good? This is a happy day for my brother and I, for the organization here, and especially for the Jets fans all over. The fact that we're here today is really a testament to what's been going on here and what the coach and the general manager and the staff has built over the last two years. The culture that enabled us to attract somebody of the caliber that we're looking at right now, Aaron Rodgers, Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. Uh, Aaron is a tremendous player, is an understatement, and he makes everybody around him better. And we're so happy to have him. We are delighted and happy. We couldn't be happier to have him as a New York Jet. I just like have a round of applause right there. Welcome to New York, Aaron. We're glad to have you. Oh, you're supposed to shake my hand. I want to say thank you to Christopher and Woody for bringing me here. Um, obviously, Coach Sala, Joe Douglas, all the way. My agent, Dave Dunn. Um, this is a surreal day for me. After spending 18 years in the same city, it's been a lot of uh, introductions today, meeting a lot of people, but there's a lot of excitement. Uh, I'm here because I believe this. I believe in this team. I believe in Coach Sala. I believe in the direction uh, of Joe Douglas. Obviously, he's drafted really well the last couple of years, having an uh, offensive and defensive working year. Um, but big thanks to the Jets organization. Obviously, a big thanks to the Green Bay Pack organization for an incredible run. Uh, that chapter is over now, and I'm excited about the new adventure here in New York. So I'll open up to questions now. Okay. And raise your hand. Yeah. Hi, Aaron. Welcome. Congratulations. Tina Servasio from Fox 5 New York. So you mentioned the draft just now, and you believe in the direction that Joe Douglas is taking the team, but what really attracted you to make you start thinking that the New York Jets would be the next team you would play for? Well, they smoked us last year, so I knew they had a good team. <laughs> uh, we got to practice against them a couple of years ago, and I got to get to know Robert a little bit more. And I've always loved what he's all about. We played him in San Fran a, a few times, and mostly they got the best of us. Um, but I liked the way that he was leading, his coaching style. Um, a big reason I'm here, uh, i got to mention, is Nathaniel Hackett, who's here. Uh, Hackett and I became really close friends for three, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, three years in, in Green Bay. And I love him like a brother. And I believe in him. And I'm uh, really happy to be back working with him again. Obviously, Joe has got a great track record so far of drafting some incredible players. Uh, but it takes a system. And obviously, Robert has the, uh, the right sauce, so I'm excited about getting to work with him and Brick and uh, Mark Kwan, former teammate of mine, and uh, it's a great staff. But, you know, I'm an, old, I'm an old guy, so I want to be a part of a team that can win it all. And I believe that this is a place we can get that done. Right here. Hi, Aaron. Rich Sabini, ESPN. It's been about six weeks. Hey, it's been about six weeks since you said on McAfee that you wanted to play for the Jets. So I'm just curious, what was it like? This process lasted a pretty long time, longer than people expected. What was it like for you waiting the six weeks? And was there any point where you thought maybe that this trade would not happen? And when did you, did you know for sure that you were going to be a Jet? Not, I mean, not really. I believe it was going to happen the entire time. Just a matter of, uh, I think, waiting each other out. My intention coming out of the darkness was to pursue uh, this opportunity, and I enjoyed the meeting uh, with you know Woody and Christopher came out, 
these two guys, Hack, I may, and I just got a great feel with uh, all those guys about the possibility. And as I leaned into it, uh, getting back into some more strenuous workouts, um, I just really believe that this is where I was supposed to be. Um, a lot of things had to come together. Uh, I believe there was some major synchronization to make this happen. Um, but I'm excited about the opportunity here. I always believed this was uh, possible. And things moved pretty quickly on Monday, and, and thankfully I'm here now. Bruce. Aaron Bruce Beck, NBC4 New York. Hey, Bruce. Welcome. Thank you. How driven are you to win for this fan base, which hasn't been to the playoffs since 2010, the longest stretch in professional sports for the four different leagues right now? That's, ex that's exciting. Just have an incredible, passionate fan base. I saw that last year at, at Lambeau. Obviously, you know about Fireman Head and, and uh, uh, you know his passion for the team. Uh, I think that's an exciting draw to this as well as being a part of something special. I grew up watching old VHS tapes of uh, of the Super Bowls, and so obviously I know about the Guarantee and and Broadway Joe. Been a while since then. I noticed uh, walking in this morning that that uh, Super Bowl three trophy is looking a little lonely. So. <laughs> Hey, Aaron, uh, Brian Costello, New York Post. In your view, is this, you're here for 2023, and then we'll see what happens, or do you view this as more than a one-year thing right now? Yeah, right now I'm just going to focus on this season, and uh, I'm excited about being here. I expect to be here uh, for the duration of the offseason. I'm excited to get to know my new teammates and the coaching staff and the organization, and and obviously, I have a background with Coach Hackett and that offense, but um, I'm excited about just diving in and being a part of uh, this group and getting to know some of the names of uh, my teammates. And also, I'm excited about working with all you guys. I've heard a lot about the New York media, and I'm excited to see what that's all about. Uh, Matt Schneidman, The Athletic. Hi, Matt. Hi, Aaron. Um, so you obviously said with Pat and AJ that you would have liked more direct communication about moving on from you. Then Brian comes out and says he tried to, he just didn't respond. How, what actually happened this offseason between the two sides that led us to where we are now? Uh, I mean, I don't know if I need to really get into specifics. Um, I will say people that know me, uh, I'm fortunate to live in a, in a beautiful house. The only downside is I have very limited cell service. So if you want to get a hold of me, I have to see your face. You got to FaceTime me. Uh, so the only response to, to the communication thing is there's you know records in your phone about who called you, when, FaceTime, and there wasn't any specific FaceTimes for many of those numbers that I was looking at. Um, that's neither here nor there because we're now we're in this position. Um, obviously, that's somehow you know what. Uh, the direction they wanted to go as far as they couldn't, the story, they couldn't get a hold of me, which led for this to, to be the case. My point was if, if there was a change that wanted to be made, uh, why wasn't that told to me earlier in the off season? Now, obviously, my future was undecided at that time. I didn't know if I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to go into my darkness retreat and, and sit with it and contemplate. Um, but when I came out, it was evident that uh, it was uh, retire or move on to a new team. Right here. Aaron, Joe Masiri, Pix11, over here. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned thinking about retirement. I believe you said at one point it was like 90%. So how much about it was the Jets specifically and what they had to offer? Was it the Jets or retirement? And how much are you motivated by the fact that Green Bay maybe wanted to move on or was ready to move on going into this season? I mean, not really motivated by that, honestly. I, I'm, I'm very self-motivated, and I can find different ways to get that extra little inspiration all the time. Uh, it's when you get older, it's fun to uh, to go out and prove it each year that you can still do it, and that's enough motivation I think that I need. Um, but this was a big draw because of the people you see on stage here. Obviously, Coach Hackett, um, the opportunity to be a part of a city that's hungry, that that's a, a team of incredible fan base that's hungry to win again. Uh, 12 years without the playoff, uh, not, you know, Super Bowl wins and Super Bowl three. it's been a long time. So the opportunity to be a part of something special here, uh, it's different. You know, it's similar to Green Bay in that way. When you win in a city like Green Bay, I assume 
for a team like the New York Jets, you go down in history. And there's something special about adding that to your legacy. Joseph, what do you think? Hi, Aaron. How are you? Josephine Anderson, Stephen Schwartz. Good to see you. Um, you specifically said that right now you just want to focus on the season, but can you specify whether you were asked by Jets Brass for a longer investment in terms of your time, given the resources that they're giving up to get you? And then can you specify when you plan on practicing and if that is before mandatory? Uh, the first part, there wasn't any specific uh, conversation that, I'm, that I would like to share with that. Um, again, I'm, I'm an older player, so you know, there's a lot more than just the playing part. There's the body part that comes into play. But the reason I take care of myself is to allow myself to continue to play into my 40s. And I always dreamt about being a starter at 40. I'll turn 40 uh, in December of this year. Um, but I, I'm going to be here for the foreseeable future. Um, I think it's important. Obviously, I know the scheme that Hack's putting in. There's some tweaks. But I want to get to know the guys and, and uh, be around the, the facility and obviously you know, I haven't really spent much time in Jersey outside of Teterboro, so um, I'm, I'm going to get to know the, the area and figure out a place to live and all that stuff, and I, I want to be here to do that. So uh, there's a lot of reasons to be here. Most most importantly, just getting other guys and put together some fun events to start that team building, which I think is really important this time of year. Uh, uh, yeah. Does tomorrow count? Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow, I'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Aaron, it's Juan Saylor for the Be Your Daily News. How you doing? Good. Uh, I just wanted to know your motivation to continue to play at this point. Obviously, you said you were 90% retired when you went to the Dartish Retreat. So just what motivates you at this point to just continue to keep going at, at almost age 40? Well, it's joy. You know, you want to be having fun with what you're doing. Uh, if you're not enjoying it, then it's time to do something else. And I think the opportunity to work with Nathaniel again, to work with Robert, um, to uh, to be around Joe, to be around the Johnsons and, and the vision they have for the team. Uh, I think the excitement of a new chapter uh, has really been fueling my off-season workout so far and just the overall excitement level. Um, I've mentioned the Jets fans, an incredibly passionate group. I'm excited to meet them to play in front of them, um, but to be a part of something special is what keeps you coming back. And I think this is this is building right now. And what Coach has done the last couple of years, uh, he's building something special the right way with the right values, uh, the right type of leadership. And I think I can just fit in perfectly. I'm not here to be a savior of any kind. I'm just here to be uh, the best quarterback I can be, to lead authentically and to inspire the guys around me to raise their level of play to uh, to an even greater greater spot. Aaron, uh, Zach Rosenblatt with The Athletic. <clears throat> uh, you, you alluded to this before, but whenever any, somebody comes here, uh, they talk about can he handle the New York media market, all that stuff. I'm curious what you think about moving to a big market like this and how you think the added attention, how you think they'll be able to handle that. I'm excited about it. Uh, I definitely have heard a lot about the media. You guys have a job to do. You're very good at it. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity uh, to work with you, with you all, to get to know you guys. Uh, and I've been in Green Bay for 18 years. It's a long time in a small town. That's been great. Uh, I grew up in a small town. I think when you grow up in a tiny little town in Northern California, you dream about being in a big city and dream about living in a big city and you know having places to go eat and interesting things to do and obviously with the city being 40 minutes away you got a lot of that stuff but I'm excited about the opportunity and look forward to meeting you all and, and uh, starting a relationship. Take a couple more. Aaron Ryan Dunleavy from the New York Post. Hi Ryan. Hey. Uh, there's certainly a sense of deja vu here with a Packers icon coming to the Jets. I'm wondering, I don't know what your relationship is with Brett, if you guys talked at all about this and what, any idea of what to expect here, and then was there any hesitation on your part, uh, I guess, making the same exact jump that the guy you've been compared to your whole career made? Well, you had a legendary career. Um, it is very ironic that uh, our paths have kind of taken another step in the same direction. 
Brett and I, over the years, had talked about uh, this transition and what it was like. But that was different uh, coaching staff, uh, different GM, different circumstances. Um, I'm excited about the opportunity to work with these guys and my teammates and coaching staff. But uh, nice pictures there. <laughs> but we haven't talked specifically about this opportunity. Aaron, Ian O'Connor, and Harper Collins. Uh, hey, Aaron. Uh, just wondering, there's obviously been a lot of conversation about how you can elevate the Jets, but you mentioned legacy earlier. What do you think that winning a championship for a New York franchise that hasn't won one in decades would do for your historical standing in the sport? Well, I mean, I don't really know about the historical standing in the sport. I think more from this organization standpoint, it'd be really special. Uh, there's some iconic names that have played here, probably none more iconic than number 12. Uh, and I heard what he said about unretiring his number, but to me, 12 is Broadway Joe, and I didn't want to even go down that path, and I'm excited about going back to my college number, but there's something special about playing in the city uh, for a team like this uh, with the story franchise. Uh, and the, you know, obviously going way, way back to uh, Tour Bowl three to be a part of something special would uh, definitely help you go down in the history of an organization. I already have 18 years uh, in an incredibly iconic organization, and it'd be fun to be a part of the history of this one as well. Thank you, everybody. We'll uh, do the photo op right now, and I'll uh, break down for one-on-ones. Appreciate everybody for coming. Thank you so much.